Are you sabotaging your own success? Has life been going well for a time, but now it seems to be going all wrong? Do you want to know the common factors for cause of this? I'm going to share that with you in so much more in today's episode of Going Deeper. So welcome. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics, such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Hey folks and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host John Morris and welcome to the show that's designed to get you from where you are to where you want to be step by step, hopefully simply and always reminding you that I never teach on anything that I don't have first hand experience in. Well why remember, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them in their hour of struggle. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's focus on today's topic where we talk about self-sabotage. What is self-sabotage? Self-sabotage is where a person either subconsciously, knowingly or unknowingly, sabotages their own success. You've heard it said before that I'm sure that many times that people will say, well, you know, things have been going really, really well, but, you know, I, I now need to prepare for things to go bad. Okay? The problem with this mindset is, well, you know, things ebb and flow always, you can actually be sabotaging your own success. People have entered into relationships before and been really, really happy and then expected things to go disastrously wrong. Why? Because it had gone disastrously wrong in many of their other relationships. So they believe that whenever they enter into a relationship that they can only have temporary happiness, but it won't be long lasting. It won't be for the long term. And people are like that with their finances, with their business success, whatever it might be. Now remember, what we think we become. That's really, really important. There isn't a darn thing in the entire world that you can see, hear, touch, taste or smell that hasn't been created by thought. Okay, now that you've, if you've followed me for a long time, you will know obviously that I talk about that a lot. It's all about the mind. The mind is the center. It is the central nervous system, the supercomputer, where everything that we do is created by thought, okay? So when you've got a mindset like this that says, well, you know, I've, I've now got all this business success, but you know, maybe I'm not, you know, worthy of it. Maybe I just won't show up for meetings. Maybe I won't talk to the right people. Maybe I won't do the disciplines that I need to, to do. You're actually self-sabotaging. When you're in that relationship and you're so happy, you're so excited and you lie there awake at night and you see, well, it's not going to last, you know, I'm going to enjoy it for what it is. It's not going to last, you know, you're making a mental decision right there. And it's really important to be aware of this, that in doing that, you are mentally sabotaging your external happiness. And it's the same with your finances. You may sit there and say, gosh, I would love to be a millionaire. Who wouldn't love to be a millionaire? But you won't do the study. And if you do the study, you don't believe that it can actually happen. And if you don't believe it can actually happen, you might say, well, you know, I might have it for a time, but I'm just going to lose it all. And you start sabotaging yourself. You start behaving in the way that you think. So if you start thinking in the way that you're going to lose, that you're not going to turn up, you're not going to be professional, you're going to be harsh with people, you're going to be rude to people, all based on this mindset because of what you believe and you've conditioned yourself to believe, then that's what's going to happen. Remember, everything that we think has to return to us in some form or another. It's like the tides. You know, you throw a bottle, and, and, I, and I love saying this, if you throw a bottle out into the, the ocean, the chances are it's going to end up washing back up, depending on the tide, but it's going to end up washing back up on the shore. In some form, it will return to us. It might return in the form of help, it might return in the form of a bottle. Who knows? But it will return in some form. So, I need to tell you about something else. Okay, so this is sort of part two. So the first part there was being aware if you are sabotaging yourself, it's really important that you listen to the messages 
that you are saying to yourself. We talk to ourselves all the time. Be aware of the messages that you're saying to yourself, okay? The second thing is this. The brain is not logical, okay? That The brain is actually quite erratic at times. And whereas you would think, you know, that the brain would work logically and it should work logically, it doesn't. It works by association. So for example, if you don't like beetroot, for example, I don't like beetroot. I don't like it because of how it tastes, because of how it smells, because of how it looks. But I wasn't born with that association. That is what we call a learned association, which means something happened in my life, probably my mother's cooking, as much as I love her daily, but probably my mother's cooking, when I was introduced to beetroot, or maybe, I don't think, in fact, maybe she didn't like it. Um, so someone didn't like it and I learned, you know, that association. It's the same as a fear of spiders. Where does that often come from? Are we born with a fear of spiders? No! <laughs> Babies! Have you ever seen a baby with a spider? It wants to pick it up, wants to pull its legs off, wants to play with it! Babies are not born. Where we learn our fear of spiders, the same as anything else, is usually from our parents or from our guardians or from someone in our family that has a fear of spiders. They let out a scream. It creates a mental association that spiders are bad. Spiders are to be feared. Spiders are whatever it might be. We didn't learn the spider hasn't done anything. It's just sitting on the wall or running across the floor. It could care less. It hasn't touched us. Most spiders in the UK are completely harmless. Now you've obviously got your evolutionary, um, you know, associations as well, which was that we have we we've evolved to react, for example, to poisonous snakes and scorpions and tsunamis and tornadoes and and whatever it might be. Um, you know, we know how to avoid certain things. And that gets us to our third point, which is what our brain is ultimately trying to do. Our brain is designed really with one purpose in mind, and it's to make sure that we survive, okay? So for example, you know, when people are having an anxiety attack and their body shuts down, what's happening there is that the brain is trying to survive. It's shutting down non-essential systems. It's a dangerous place to be in. You see this all the time when people pass out. They've taken so much pain and punishment that they pass out, and then obviously, you know, the brain shuts down and restarts itself. It's like a computer. So. What our brain is essentially trying to do with our bodies and our associations is trying to avoid pain and trying to gain pleasure. Now, write these things down because the levels that people are willing to go to, we talked about this a little bit a while ago in the procrastination episode, but the, the levels that people are willing to go to, to gain pleasure and to avoid pain is ridiculous, okay? Let's take, for example, the avoiding of pain. So people avoid pain by not engaging in social situations, especially if they've got anxiety, um, not speaking to the person that they know they need to speak to, not confessing when they've maybe done something, even if it's small, not confessing when they've done something wrong or something that hasn't met a standard. Um, other ways people try to avoid pain is avoiding certain situations, work, business, financial, facing up to the truth, facing up to relationships, um, facing up to the loss of a loved one. People will try and avoid pain in all manners possible. They'll sit on their couch, they'll eat, they'll vegetate, they'll sit there with ice cream, they'll sit in front of the TV, blinds drawn. They're doing all of these things to avoid pain. That's one of the biggest reasons that people don't like spending time with themselves because it means they have to face themselves and if they're doing this by themselves, then it means they're going to, in their mind, encounter some pain. One of the things we do in our coaching practice is remind people, look, it's not a big deal if you sit there and you've got a fault. You know, you just maybe don't understand what that is. We've had people before that, you know, have dealt with certain sexual issues and we've walked them through it and said, well, your body actually is designed in this specific way. When you learn and when we explore certain issues and areas, people gain knowledge and when they gain knowledge, the things that they were terrified of all of a sudden don't seem that big. So that's some of the reasons that people try to avoid pain. Other reasons and other ways that people try to gain pleasure. Oh boy, my, this one could go on a while, folks. So the number one, re, or number one way that people are trying to gain pleasure is sexually because it is one, you know, we are human beings, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, yes, but there's been a little bit of pleasure that's been attached with sex. 
And that is why now there are so many teenagers underage and, and younger than teenagers that are experimental with sexual activity. There are so many adults that are getting involved with multiple sexual acts, whether or not it be online, whether it be physical partners, whether it be leaving a home and basically going off having a wild time. There's a lot of reasons why people are trying to gain pleasure. They're also trying to gain comfort. So that's why when we talked about in procrastination that, you know, people will sit on the, the sofa and they'll eat, you know, that big bucket of ice cream because it's going to give them temporary pre-pleasure. It's not going to be lasting and it's going to have a lot of side effects. So what I want you to do now is to sit down and just examine in your own life ways that you're trying to avoid pain, associations that you have to pain. Is it, for example, telling someone really, really special to you that you love them? You know, that you have loved them for all these years, but you're terrified of their response. It, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes it's better to know than to not know. Is it, you know, a case of being in a relationship that is no longer serving you, that's no longer um, healthy, that's no longer working, that's no longer helpful, but you two refuse to communicate with each other, but you don't have that conversation of how can we improve this or do we leave because you want to avoid pain. So you're just going to settle for less than what you could be. And then obviously I want you to, to on the other side, think about ways that you're trying to gain pleasure. Is it through sex? Is it through pornography? Is it through, you know, whatever it might be? Is it through an affair? You know, most people that get into affairs are doing it because they're trying to gain pleasure. There's something in the, the relationship that they're, maybe husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, that they're not currently experiencing that they want to experience with somebody else. And it's really, really important to be aware of where and why you are trying to gain pleasure. When you know and you understand why you are doing something, you can then understand how to change it. You can understand actually what it is that you're really searching for. We've covered this, obviously, the seven fundamental needs in other episodes. I'm not going to cover it now. You can go back, obviously, and check. Um, but when people are trying to gain pleasure, they will go to insane lengths in order to attempt to gain pleasure. So it's really important that you're aware of yourself, your inner engineering, because remember, in our pursuit of gaining pleasure, Oftentimes when our brain is thinking pleasure, 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 it's filled with dopamine. It's not making logical, um, you know, decisions. It's basically sitting there and saying, how can I get pleasure? How can I get pleasure? How can I get pleasure? And then, and then everything has been done. Everything's been ticked, you know, and, and literally you sit there and say, oh my goodness, what have I done? And that's when the realities of the situation set in. So what I want you to do underneath every single one of these is said, what is the possible effect? I had a friend of mine, you know, who went off some really reckless behavior. They had a business, they had the family and everything else. And then it was asking the question, how is this going to affect your business? How's it going to affect your family? How's it going to affect the trust dynamic? How's it going to affect ultimately you, you know, where you can say, well, maybe this isn't what I was looking for at all. You know, and some people are looking for just, just the most random things to gain pleasure. When inside, all they're looking for is maybe attention, or all they're looking for is new experience, all they're looking for is, is it maybe excitement. You know, again, the seven fundamental needs, if you understand them and you know them, it's really, really important on how they work. So once you've figured these things out, folks, and once you've actually learned about these things, you can then be aware, am I sabotaging myself? Am I sabotaging my own success? Am I stopping me from getting from where I am to where I want to be? And now I actually know what I can do about it. And if you need help in this, folks, um, don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel ashamed or anything. A lot of people do, you know, and it's okay to not know. You only know what you know. And if you knew better, you would do better. And that is why, yeah, again, I've been through this stuff. I, I was one that was sabotaging my own self without knowing it. So it's really important when you figure these things out and you actually learn these things, then to take action and say, right, okay, that's the third or fourth step. How do I now change to be the person I want to be? And when you do that, that becomes an amazing thing, but it all by the power of thought. As we talked about in a couple of weeks ago, you know, people would rather die in some ways than actually exert the power of thought. But when you exert the power of thought, all of a sudden it just becomes like, wow, this is amazing. This is incredible. I can actually figure this out. When you do this, it builds your confidence. 
and you move forward in life. It becomes wonderful. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it really, really helped you. I want you to leave any comments and things in the comment section below. You can get in touch with us as always at thebattleswheelface.com for life coaching, for personal development coaching, whether you're a teenager, whether you're an adult, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're not in a relationship, whoever you are. Um, if you're an artist, if you're a creative mind and you're looking for guidance and coaching, get in touch with us um, because that is what we do. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to work with you. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it can be the very thing that helps them in their hour of need. You can get in touch with us uh, on patreon.com. You can see the monthly memberships that we've got that are fast, fast growing, which I absolutely love. It's so exciting. Um, both for one-on-one -on -one coaching for teens, for adults, and group coaching for teens and adults as well. And you can get in touch with us at my body and so at patreon.com forward slash my body and so I got so excited there, didn't I? And until next time, folks, this has been Going Deep Rive and your host, John Morris, helping you get from where you are to where you want to be, step by step, and hopefully simply. And that's, that's the best way of doing it. Until next time, take care, God bless, and I will see you soon. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity, and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach to the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step-by-step -step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening, and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire, or they get that goal, or they hit that big target, or whatever it might be. And also, as a trifecta, I am committed to you, to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be in, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed, if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I am committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step plan of action that we can put together. But now folks, I want to tell you about the Early Bird Special Offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me, one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to really develop that passion, to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh. you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one, understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today I would love to hear from you as I say this is open only for 10 people and once it's done it's done so click that box below get in touch let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other and I look forward to working with you have an amazing day folks take care God bless and I will see you soon